Hi folks, welcome back. Thank you for watching. Please do hit subscribe if you haven't done so yet. It really does help when you do that. So today folks, we're going to be comparing two legendary Echoplex preamp pedals. Now, if you just want to hear the pedal comparison today and want to skip this intro, I'll put a timestamp on screen now and it will also be in the YouTube slider bar. So please feel free to skip ahead to the loud bit. Anyway, the Echoplex preamp is a bit of a thing for guitar players, and it all started back in the 1960s, when guitarists, Jimmy Page most notably, worked out that if you plug your guitar into an Echoplex delay unit and turn the echo down to zero, the unit changed the guitar sound in a very pleasing way, and that was all down to the preamp circuitry that was in the Echoplex. So a lot of guitarists over the years have found their sound by plugging their guitar into an Echoplex, but turning the echo off. It just sort of fattens up the signal. It gives a slight level boost, but it just enhances everything going into your amp. And in the last decade or two, lots of pedal manufacturers have tried to capture that Echoplex preamp in pedal format. And there's loads of different versions on the market, but out of all of them, two names in particular repeatedly rise to the top of the pile. The first one is this pedal here, the Chase Tone Secret Preamp, and the second is this, the Clinch FX EP Pre. Both of these pedals are said to be as close as you can possibly get to that old EP3 circuit. Now, there's lots of things spoken on forums about these two pedals and people saying how they're different and similar, but today I wanted to put them side by side to really hear what the differences are if any, because of course you can't really trust everything you read on forums. But before we get into the actual playing, there's a few important differences to note about these pedals before we even plug them in. The first is the internal construction. Now the secret preamp uses old school through hole components, whereas the EP Pre, and it's quite hard to photograph because the board's upside down, uses surface mount components. Now again, there's lots of things spoken online about how surface mount is not as good as through hole, but any engineer will tell you that they sound exactly the same. And lots of the kind of stereotypes around surface mount being not very good largely stems from how hard it can be to repair, at least by DIY people, but also probably nostalgia. We're dealing with vintage circuits here and we're using a modern production technique to capture a vintage circuit. And for vintage nerds like me, that doesn't really sit right. But ultimately, I don't think the actual construction style will affect the, how these pedals sound whatsoever. But there is one important part of the circuit that is worth noting. And that is in the original EP3 preamps, there was a certain JFET transistor called the TIS-58. Now, the secret preamp here uses new old stock, vintage 1970s TIS-58 JFETs in it. Now, the clinch effects, I believe when this pedal first came out, a good, you know, probably 15 years ago now, originally Peter Clinch was using hand-selected TIS-58s, but he now uses a surface mount equivalent. Now, whether he ultimately changed because the components sounded exactly the same, or the TIS-58 ran out, or he couldn't use them in the surface mount design, or it was just too time-consuming hand-selecting the JFETs, I imagine it's probably a combination of all of those things. But this pedal uses the new old stock components, this one does not. Now, the next part of the circuitry that's really important to talk about is the internal voltage that the Echoplex preamp ran at. And I believe it was in the region of about 22, 23 volts internally. So both of these pedals contain charge pumps or voltage multipliers so that they can run internally on higher voltages than you give them from your pedal board power supply. But they do differ in terms of how they need to be powered. So the secret preamp only wants a 9 volt input, that's all you can use and it ups that internally to I think 26 volts and then filters it down to 23. How it works, I don't know. But you do need to give it 150 milliamps, and that's quite a high current draw for an analog pedal. Digital, not so much, but analog, a fuzz will draw about four milliamps. This one's 150, and most power supplies can probably give you that, but not all, especially if you're daisy chaining pedals, which I would never recommend, you might run out of current if you're needing a high current nine volt supply. But it does run internally at 23 volts off that. Now, 
the clinch effects can take 9 to 12 volts. And again, it ups it internally. But the, if you give it a 9 volt supply, it ups it to, I think, about 17 volts internally. If you want the true Echoplex voltage of 23 volts, you need to give it a 12 volt supply. So not all power supplies have a 12 volt output. But if you do run it on 12 volts, it only draws, I think, about 10 milliamps. So it's a much lower current draw, but you need a higher voltage. Now, it is absolutely possible to run this pedal on 9 volts with very, very little change to the tone. But rather than leave it the chance, I'm going to show you that now. So here's a very brief comparison of this pedal running on 9 volts compared to it running on 12 volts. <laughs> So as you can hear, there is basically no difference. 9 volts maybe sounds a little bit quieter, more compressed and slightly more narrow in its bandwidth, but generally speaking, unless you're A-Bing between the two, you can run this pedal on 9 volts absolutely fine. But today, just so we can keep this test as fair as possible, I'm going to give the secret preamp 9 volts, so it's running internally at 23, and I'm going to give the EP3 12 volts, so it's also running internally at about 23. But also there's another feature we need to cover before we dive into this today. Because the Echoplex preamp didn't stay the same throughout its entire production period. It kind of had two distinct eras. The early 70s was a much brighter sounding preamp, and as the decade went on the preamp started to sound a little bit darker in terms of its production. So both of these pedals capture both those eras of preamp. On the top here the EP Pre has a version 1 which is bright and version 2 which is darker. And the secret preamp here has three modes. It has bright and dark, just like the clinch, but it also has a mid mode. Now that's not mid range as such, it's like a midpoint between bright and dark. So it's like a compromise EQ. But today I'm not going to use the mid mode. I'm going to compare this pedal with this pedal in bright and dark modes, because this isn't a demo of the secret preamp. It's a comparison to see how they differ. So that's exactly what we're going to do today, folks. I'm going to put both of these pedals in the same situations, and I'm also going to shoot the footage separately. I'm not going to flip between them in real time, because I want this to be as fair a test as I can possibly make it, because we're going to be talking subtle differences here. And if you use a patch lead from one to the other, then the second pedal will get slightly more capacitance, it's been bypassed, and we want it to be as fair as humanly possible. So we're going to give it the correct voltage to run internally at Echoplex voltage, and I'm going to shoot the same guitar into the same amp, set exactly the same, with the same leads, the same mics, the blend of the mics will stay exactly the same for all the clips, so we can hear exactly what differences there are are between these two pedals, if any. Now, the volume control on these pedals is slightly different to what you might expect. The Unity volume is about 10 o'clock or thereabouts. The maximum gain is actually about 1 or 2 o'clock, and as you go above that, the circuit kind of folds in on itself a little bit, and you actually get less level, but generally speaking, a different EQ. So you kind of have boost and then tonal change up the top. So I'm going to look at these pedals in all of those different situations. I'm going to set the amp clean in some clips, dirty in others, bright in some clips, dark in others, and just see how these two pedals compare in a variety of different situations. So I'm really looking forward to shooting this. I think it's going to be a lot of fun and uh, we can have a chat at the end about what differences there are, if any. So without further ado, folks, here we go.
we are folks the secret preamp and the ep pre now please do comment underneath and let me know what differences you were hearing today if any i love chatting nerdy guitar stuff with you folks down in the comment section and i dare say these comments are going to be especially nerdy now overall these two pedals sound pretty much exactly the same don't they now which one sounds closest to an original ep3 preamp I couldn't say because I don't have an original unit here, not that the original units were particularly consistent anyway, but they both do pretty much exactly the same thing. And you would not be sad to have either of these pedals on your pedal board. Now, I think there were a few very, very slight differences. I think in the bright mode, the secret preamp had a touch more low end than the EP Pre, but 
not by much. And in the dark mode, I think the EP Pre had a touch more low end than the secret preamp, but we are really splitting hairs there. It's basically negligible. But there were two differences that were a little bit more obvious. Now, the first is across all of the playing today, I think the secret preamp had a touch more top end, kind of upper mids going into treble and presency frequencies. It just sounded a little bit less filtered up top than the EP Pre. But again, it's really not very much at all. And that could equally be down to different component tolerances as it is a design difference in the pedals. So again, they sound broadly speaking the same. But I think the biggest difference I heard today was when you turn the volume all the way up, like I did with the Les Paul at the end there. And as I said in the intro, you get most gain around one, two o'clock. And above that, you tend to get an EQ difference. And I think with everything turned up full, the secret preamp still had a lot more kind of treble in there. The EP Pre sounded a lot flatter in its EQ with the volume up full, and it sounded closer to the bypassed guitar sound than the secret preamp did. So I think that's one difference we can really say is there between these two circuits. But again, most people will use these pedals at the end of their pedal board for a slight level boost going off to the amp and that kind of glossy enhance effect. So most people probably won't push it all the way up for a really flat EQ. That's not really what these circuits are all about in terms of them being in pedal form. So overall then, they sound basically the same. The, the surface mount of this and the through hole of this doesn't seem to make any difference whatsoever. But I think it's also worth saying, and this is kind of like an addendum to the main video. This is just my thoughts kind of spiraling a bit here. This pedal has the original TIS58 JFET transistor in. This pedal does not. Now, does it change how the pedal sounds? On today's evidence, probably not. However, how you connect with a piece of gear, I think does play into it. Now, if you were buying an EP preamp pedal purely for the sound, you would not be able to tell the difference between these two unless you're A-being. They sound broadly speaking the same. But for someone like me, I tend to connect more with gear that I know uses new old stock components and transistors and capacitors and all that sort of stuff. I really like that. And I think the psychology of how using a piece of gear plays into your choices, it really does make a difference. It doesn't necessarily make a sonic difference, but if you're the sort of person that really likes using that sort of old equipment inside your pedals and that makes you happy, then I do think that is an important consideration to make. On top of power requirements, side jacks versus top jacks, all that sort of stuff, I think this pedal using not necessarily through hole components, but the original TIS58 JFET, that is a consideration for some people, not all, and we're going much more into psychology rather than just how something sounds and feels and behaves, but it is a consideration for some people. So I think it's worth mentioning that too. But anyway, folks, there we go. Finally, a good comparison of the secret preamp and the EP Pre. So please do let me know your thoughts underneath. I love hearing from you guys on all this sort of stuff. So thank you ever so much for watching, folks. I hope this video was interesting and useful for you and put some forum myths to rest. And please do carry on subscribing. I know I always say it, but it makes a big difference when you hit subscribe. And I will see you very, very soon. Bye-bye.